Today, I'm going to show you how to add polls to a Teams meeting. I've already created a meeting, so let's open it up and take a look at how to add polls. Navigate to the toolbar at the top of the screen and click the plus button to add a tab. From there, select Forms. This dialog box lets you know that you can add a Forms tab to a chat or channel as well as a meeting. Click Add and then another dialog box will appear letting you know that you can create your poll before or during the meeting. And then click Save. Now you have a Polls tab added to your meeting. Then click Create New. And here you see that there are three choices, multiple choice poll, quiz, or a word cloud. A multiple choice poll or quiz is essentially the same thing. It allows you to put one question at a time into your Teams meeting. The main difference is that with the quiz, you can specify a correct answer. A word cloud poll is an open-ended question that allows the participants to answer with a word or short phrase. Let's start by adding a multiple choice poll. My question is going to be, what video should we make next? Our team creates videos by content types, so I'm going to add those as the options. If you want more than two options, just click Add Options to add additional answers to your poll. By default, the participants can only choose one option. If you want to allow multiple answers, just toggle that on. You can also choose if the responses should be anonymous or not. When you're done setting up your poll, click Save as Draft. And now we have our first poll. Click the drop down next to the word launch and you will find the options to edit or delete the poll. This meeting isn't scheduled to begin until later, but I can click the launch button to send the poll out to the participants and they will be able to find it in the chat for the meeting. In this example, my coworker Jessica is logged into Teams. She's going to select Power Automate and then click on Submit Vote. Back in the organizer's view, you can see that the poll is live and I can view the results and then go back to the question. If you click the drop down arrow next to view results, you will see that the menu has updated to include close poll, response detail, export results and delete poll. Now we're going to quickly look at how to create a multiple choice quiz. Remember that on a quiz, you can mark one of the answers as correct. So I'm going to test my team's knowledge on what is or is not a Power Platform application and enter all of the choices. Then I'm going to mark Dataverse as the correct answer and then click Save as Draft. And now we're going to take a look at creating a word cloud poll. All you have to do is type in your question. I'm going to ask again about what videos we should create next. The difference with the word cloud poll is the participants in the meeting won't have choices that they must choose from. They can submit their own ideas. Now that the polls are all set up, I'm going to join my meeting. And I'm also going to log in as my colleague, Jessica. From the Teams desktop app, you will see the forms or polls icon in the toolbar at the top of the screen. You will be able to see the closed poll for the question that I asked before the meeting and then my other two are in a draft status. Even though the meeting has already started, I can still edit or delete the poll, or I can launch it. Participants viewing the meeting from the Teams desktop app will see the question show up in the middle of their screen. Jessica has logged in from the Teams web app, so she needs to open the meeting chat in order to view the question. When I launch the word cloud, she will also see it in the meeting chat window. Back in the desktop app, I'm going to answer my quiz and select Dataverse. When I click submit, the correct answer will appear on screen and then I will click done to dismiss the window. If you want to create a new poll while you are in the meeting, all you have to do is open the poll pane and select create new. Here you will see the same choices that I demonstrated from the meeting details page. Now I'm going to launch the word cloud so we can get an idea of how it works. 
I can type in any response I want. For example, I'm going to say our next video idea should be about forms questions. If anyone in the meeting hovers over an answer, they will be able to upvote that particular idea. I have added a few more answers, and as you can see, a couple of them were about different types of flows, so the word flow is now in bold to call this out as a popular idea. Now that I have gathered some information from my team, I can go to the drop down next to view results and close the poll. You can check out the response details from within the meeting, or after you leave the meeting, you can always go back to the meeting details and find the responses there. For example, if I click on response details for the word cloud, you can see who made which suggestions and then export the results to an Excel file, which will show up in your downloads folder. Polls are built on Microsoft Forms, so I have navigated to office.com and I am going to select the Forms application. If I navigate to all my forms, I will see all of the polls that I have created as indicated by this graph icon. Select the question that you want and you will see a Responses tab. When you click on that, you will be able to review the answers or download them to an Excel file. As a bonus tip, I've navigated to the general channel of my testing team to show you how to add a poll to a channel. After you select New Conversation, click on Forms in the toolbar. From there, all you have to do is type in your question and your answers. When you are ready, click on Preview. If you're happy with the question, click on Send. The poll will appear under the Post tab in your channel and then anybody who is a member of the team can submit a vote. If you would like to learn more about Teams, please click on the playlist on the screen. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.